Welcome to Friends in Fiction, five best-selling authors and the stories. Novelists Mary Kay Andrews, Kristen Harmel, Christy Woodson Harvey, Patty Callahan Henry, and Mary Alice Monroe are five longtime friends with more than 80 published books to their credit. In 2020, they created Friends in Fiction to provide author interviews and fascinating insider talk about publishing and writing, and to highlight independent bookstores. These friends discuss the books they've written, the books they're reading now, and the art of storytelling. If you love books and you're curious about the writing world, you're in the right place. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday for a special behind the book episode of Friends in Fiction. I'm Patty Callahan Henry. Mary Alice, you're muted. <laughs> Go ahead, Mary Kay. <laughs> I'm Mary Kay Andrews. I'm Kristen Harmel. And this is Friends in Fiction Behind the Book, a deep dive into the world of our favorite books. Oh, you want to introduce yourself now? <laughs> I'm Mary Alice Monroe. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Today, we are so excited to talk to our friend Sadiqa Johnson, the author of the stunning novel Yellow Wife, that has been hailed a must read by everyone from Parade to O Magazine about how she blended fact and fiction to make the devastating realities of slavery and the terrifying world of the devil's half acre come to life. And of course, we'll also have to grab a writing tip from her before we go. And before we start, we'd like to thank our partner, Mama Geraldine's. I have to say, I live on the beach, as a lot of you know, and when my grandchildren come to visit, they use their reusable thermoses and they pack up Mama Geraldine's cheese straws and off they go. They like those little individual packs sometimes too. And in the evenings when the kids are asleep, um, Mama Geraldine's cheese straws match up beautifully with a good glass of wine. And my daughters and I just like to sit and catch up when they visit. And remember, Fab Five, use that code to get 20% off, mamageraldines.com. And of course, we're also so glad to be partnering with Page One Books. They hand select books for you each month based on your preferences and their book knowledge. And because the reads are being chosen by actual, real people, independent booksellers, you know that you are more than just an algorithm to them. The, sub the subscription package, which can run three, six, or 12 months, is a perfect gift. I just purchased two subscriptions for hard to buy for friends, and they were a huge hit. And I'm thinking about buying one for my readaholic 11 year old granddaughter. Oh, who loves, idea. Yeah, Molly loves, yeah. Uh, Molly loves fantasy. Ah, yeah, the personal, the personal touch of an indie bookstore with the delight and surprise of an online subscription service, and it's curated just for you. First time subscribers get 10% off with the code. Fab five at page one books.com. And you all know that supporting independent booksellers is at the heart of what we do. It's so important to keep supporting these small businesses run by hardworking book lovers and keep them up and running. And this week we're supporting one of our favorites, the Nantucket book partners. You can find their information and a discount code right in this video post or under announcements on our Facebook page. And you can pre-order all of our 2021 novels there too, or at least the first half of 2021. And just as a reminder, our own Patty's Surviving Savannah just came out on Tuesday. We still have not exhausted our first week ship puns. <laughs> and I want to remind you... If you haven't already, to take this final opportunity to purchase it during its all-important launch week. Those first week sales are vital to a book's trajectory. And if you order it at Nantucket Book Partners, you'll get a free Friends in Fiction luggage tag and a chance to win an autographed advanced reader's copy of my new novel, The Forest of Vanishing Stars. Thank you, Kristen. And just to reiterate, we all loved Surviving Savannah so much. So if you have not picked it up... Yeah. 
please do do yourself a favor. You will absolutely love it. And speaking of books we love, Yellow Wife has been hailed fully immersive and intricately crafted by Lisa Wingett, intensely moving in a starred review from Library Journal and powerful by Publishers Weekly. Sadiqwa is the author of four novels and winner of awards such as the National Book Club Award, the Phyllis Wheatley Book Award, and the USA Today Best Book Award for Best Fiction. So suffice it to say, we are really excited to have her here. So Sean, bring her in. Hey, oh my gosh, I'm so glad to be here with you ladies. <laughs> We're so thrilled to have you. We are so excited to celebrate this just really stunning, stunning new novel. I get to see Sadiqa around the web a lot because we are both tall poppy writers, but yeah. it feels so good to get to see each other kind of as close to face to face as we're all as really we can get, get right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is about as good as it gets these days, unfortunately. But um, I also follow you on Instagram and I get to swoon over your gorgeous pictures. You and your husband and your three children are outdoors all the time. You are an yeah. avid hiker. You have a beautiful family and you're always in these beautiful places doing these amazing things. And I'm like, I want to be there. I want to go. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really interested. Has, has being outside and like staying active, has that helped you during this really crazy time? Oh my gosh. It has been life changing for me to be outside. And my, my kids are not, you know, they're smiling in the picture, but they're not happy to be out there. I actually have to drag them. <laughs> Oh. Well, I was like, she's like a magical mother. Like everyone is happy and like you trail them, you know? like, No, I'm pinching so them. I'm pinching them behind the scenes saying, smile, That's awesome. smile, yeah. smile. Okay, good. Yeah, That's actually good to, good to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Sadiqa, let's get right to talking about The Yellow Wife. It's such a powerful story. It just mm -hmm. came out in January. And... Um, Wow, to such a tidal wave, if you will excuse the fun. Fun. Uh, <laughs> fun. Or if you can't turn it off. Tidal wave of great reviews. Could you tell us a little bit about the story? Yeah. So Yellow Wife is the story of Phoebe Dolores Brown. She is an enslaved girl. When the story opens, she's 17. And she's the daughter of the master of the plantation, along with his favorite slave, Ruth, who is the medicine wow. woman and the seamstress. And she has been promised freedom on her 18th birthday. Phoebe is a bit, Phoebe's a bit sheltered. Uh, the master's sister has taken a liking to her and taught her how to read and to write and to play piano. So she's had a few advantages. Well, something happens in the story, which I won't give away, but it's not what Phoebe is expecting. Instead of this happy life that she expected to live, she finds herself thrust into the bowels of slavery, where she ends up at the Lapierre mm. Jail, which is one of the most horrific places on earth. And there she catches the eye of the jailer, the person who owns it. And she has to do different things to outwit him, to survive for herself and also for her family. You know, at the beginning of the novel, you quote William Wilberforce, you may choose to look the other way, but you can never again say that you didn't know. That's such an important message, you know, that you can't unknow anymore. What do you hope readers will take away from Yellow Wife? I hope that they would take away the impossible sacrifices and decisions that women, and the story is based on a woman named Mary Lumpkins. Um, and there are, the women like Mary Lumpkins have been blotted from our history. You know, there, it was very difficult for me to find a lot of information about her, but I was able to piece together her stories through other women. And what I hope readers will take away from Yellow Wife is these impossible, decisions and situations that women like her were forced to live through uh, mm -hmm. during the era of slavery in this country. And the strength and the endurance and the willpower that they had to change their circumstances as well as other people. There's a yeah. lot of sacrifice that happens in this story. 
Yeah. So Sadiqa, I've I've read that on a visit, it was on a visit to the Richmond Slave Trail in 2016 that you came across this story of Mary Lumpkin. Is that right? It is. It was totally by accident. It wasn't something I was looking wow. for. <laughs> I wasn't cool. even a historical fiction writer. All of wow. my my first three novels are all contemporary fiction. And it's like the story found me. I was mm -hmm. with my family. We were looking for an activity wow. to do. It was one of my hiking trips, Christy. <laughs> and so we were, we were hiking along the James River and reading the different markers. And when we got to the marker that talked about the Lumpkins Jail, and it was, you know, between 1844 and 1865, over 200,000 enslaved people had passed through that jail. And the wow. owner was mean wow. and vindictive, but he was married to this black woman and they had these children. And it was said that he, you know, was called the bully trader but he was compassionate and kind to her and the kids. And that contradiction is really what kind of got under my skin and made me feel like I needed to write this story. That is fascinating, especially, I mean, the way you just put it, that the story found you, that, that's incredible. It's almost like it was meant to be. It Can definitely you, felt like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about the research process and how you brought that seed of an idea to life? So when we were on the trail, it was this energy that came over me. And when we got to the end of the trail, we were at this place called the Sacred African Burial Grounds. And that is where the enslaved people had been buried. And there was no ceremony. They were just, they waited for the bodies to pile up and they buried them. And that energy of people who didn't have a voice was there and we could feel it. Um, and wow. so that was kind of the beginning of it. I felt that energy. I felt like they were waiting for me. I wow. felt like they wanted me to tell their story. So I just dove into the research. I went to different plantations and um, I, I, I got the lay of the land. I went to the libraries. I, you know, I really just dug in and tried to find out as much as I could about Richmond at that time and about what it was like for the enslaved people who lived there. How did your children react to that? I mean, they, they were, were with you, weren't they? Yeah, they did were you, with me. Were they touched by what was going on or were they too young to? When we were on the trail and we were near the sacred African burial ground, the fr a friend who was with us, he, you know, everybody could feel this energy. So my friend, wow. he pretended to play the African drums. And so the kids, everybody just started moving and dancing. And it was like this celebratory moment. I mean, it really was something that I had not experienced before. And so they were definitely, they were definitely touched by it as well. That's right. Wow. Yeah, energy is the right word, isn't it? Yeah, That's for incredible. sure. Incredible. Yeah. Well, it's such a powerfully searing book. Um, when when you describe the particular horrors of slavery, especially in Devil's Half Acre, it, you can't unread it. You know, it's like you can't unsee something. You can't unread it. It really is powerful. And we had a discussion amongst the five of us. Some of us, especially when you're writing about real people, some of us have to, like Patsy, wasn't it Patty and Christy, I believe, who said they had to actually detach themselves when they write these really intense scenes. Yeah. And for me, I just the opposite. I get into it and I always say if I don't, for the really intense scenes, if I don't cry, then I know I haven't done it. So I'm curious for you, do you detach when you write some of these really poignant scenes or do you have to feel it? Oh, I have to feel it. Um, mm -hmm. Writing for me is like method acting. I was a theater major uh, in college. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. So I that makes sense, the two it. of you, because you were two, weren't you, Mary Ellen? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Theater, didn't you? Did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I have to feel it. I have to, the emotions need to go through my body. I need wow. to, I need to become the character in order for it to be authentic. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not going to come across well on the page. Yeah, wow. And it does, I, I'll tell you. But I'm curious, yeah. too. Do you ever, um, how do you give yourself a break when you're writing those scenes, your, scenes, yeah. your downtime? Do you have any techniques that you use? After I finish writing, my, my workout time is in the afternoon. So I write in the morning and then I'll run or I'll hike or I'll do mm -hmm. some sort of yoga, something to get the story out of my body. Because otherwise, oh. when it's time to cook dinner, I'm like, oh, you know, got all the yeah. jobs yeah. done. Yeah. 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 Okay. I got to get it out. 
Sadiqa, you have just answered the problem I've been having for five years. I've been gaining weight. I've got to, I've got to exercise rather than drink wine after that. <laughs> yeah. Solving problems yeah. left and right tonight, Thank you guys. You. <laughs> That's awesome. So Sadiqa, first of all, I have, you know, it's sa same as you. We don't set out to write historical fiction. It sets out yeah. to write us, doesn't yeah. it? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I was writing contemporary until that story said, you tell me or I'm not leaving you alone. Yeah. Same. You know? same. So yeah, same with that's what happened to you too. Yep. Yeah. So I also I often feel like not only are we writing our books, but they're sort of writing us at the same sure. time. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely agree with that. It's like once the story once the story chooses you, you know, you either say yes to it or you don't. But if you don't, it's going to keep bugging you. It's going to keep bothering you. You're going to keep thinking about these characters. And, you know, for yep. me, once I say yes to it, then I then become the conduit. I try and just let yep. the story flow mm -hmm. through me and, you know, let these characters do what they want to do. I have an outline, but it's not filled in. It's like a coloring page. And so mm -hmm. as I go, I let the cut, I let the characters fill in the color and the flavor and the feeling oh, of the story. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I feel like when, when they say that, like you have to write me, you probably felt this way about her. You, you make a couple excuses at first. Yeah. I don't write historical fiction. I can't do that. That's not what I do. And then you that, have to. Yeah. That's exactly what happened to me. Like when the story followed me home, I was literally on my computer Googling information about them, but I kept telling myself, I'm just curious. I just, just want to know more. <laughs> and it got to the point where it's I had so much. Yeah, I had so much information wow. that I had a friend who came over to the house and she said, Sadiqa, what are you working on? And I'm telling her about the story. I'm like, but I'm so afraid. Like this, you know, yeah. I, I'm not qualified. I thought writing yep. historical fiction was a specific, you know, that was for specific writers, but not me. And she said, Sadiqa, the thing that scares you most is what you're supposed to be doing next. Mm. And that that opened the door for me because mm. otherwise I was I may have chickened out. That's a good yep. friend. Oh, I, like I like that line. What scares you mm. most is what you're supposed to be. Probably supposed to be writing. Yeah. 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 So we have something we love to ask all of our guests on the show. And I can't wait to hear yours. What were the values around reading and writing in your household growing up? And how do you think that affected the writer you've become today? And then secondly, do you think it had anything to do with choosing this subject? Hmm. When I was a kid, I was an avid reader. I was the one who went to the library every Monday. I checked out seven books. I read a book a day. <laughs> In seventh grade, I can't tell you anything about seventh grade math because I was sneaking my books behind my textbook. <laughs> and I was with you on very school. So I was a big reader and, you know, I don't think that I really knew I was a writer until later. I remember writing papers and my dad editing my papers and having me do it over and over again. My mom was really into penmanship. I went to Catholic school, so it had to be beautiful. So I had to write my spelling words over and over and yes. over again. And I do think that that has shaped me, but I also you know, I try and force my kids to read, but they don't love it as much as I did. So even though my make parents, them love it. you can't make them love it. So even mm. though my parents were supportive, there was something inside of me that was really drawn to stories. And that's what took it to the next level. Yeah. It's amazing. You know, that's funny on um, like a lot of levels. My son goes to Catholic school and he was just sitting in here and doing his like penmanship homework. And I went to Catholic school too when I was growing up. And I just remember like, you know, your finger being covered with like the pencil marks when you're yes. like, <laughs> yes. and all of those things. But that is so true. I mean, we can't, you can't force someone to be a reader. And I think sometimes when we try to do that, it makes it even worse. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, becomes almost like the punishment where it's supposed to be yep. enjoyable. Yeah. That's not yeah. true for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, Sadiqa, one of my favorite things um, that you said during this launch is that Oprah has been on your vision board for years. I love that. Um, I love that so much. And so as I told everyone earlier before you came on here, Yellow Wife made the incredible um, launch into the world on O Magazine's most anticipated list. So I need to know, number one, what was the moment like for you when you found out that you were on that list? 
And two, what else is on that vision board and what's coming next? <laughs> wow. Yes. Oprah has been on my vision board and I update it every year. So I'll take some things off, things that have happened, things that feel good, things that I may have changed my mind, but she always goes back and she has the she has one place in the corner on the left-hand side. That is the Oprah spot. Yeah. So it's so funny that when I made the most anticipated O Magazine list, it was people texting me, telling me. I don't know if that happens with you guys, but like, yeah. I, it was a text from a friend who said, oh my gosh, and just sent it along. And so mm -hmm. I'm sitting in my chair, just kind of looking at my phone. Then I run downstairs because you know we're all home. So my husband's office is downstairs. So I run downstairs, I'm showing them the tags, I'm jumping around, I'm doing the happy <laughs> dance. <laughs> yeah. So it was, it was definitely amazing. And I thought, oh my gosh, what you put out there, when you put yeah. things out into the universe, you know, yeah. your words, your thoughts, your actions, your intentions have power. You just yeah. have to believe in them. And so some other things, my, my vision board is just right over there. Oh, um, the camera so I can some, see. It. I know. I wish I could, but some some I'm I'm in the process of redoing it. So I have a couple of pages that are not completely pasted. But I will tell you, mm -hmm. Ava DuVernay um, is on my board, and she's wearing a T-shirt that says, "I am my ancestors' greatest dream." And so oh, oh, that, that is that. very appropriate wow. for Yellow Wife. And so, hey, Sadiqa, is, would would you take a picture of your vision board and maybe post it? On sure. friends and fiction, because but if it's that. private, if it's private, you don't have to. <laughs> okay, because that might be like. If you if you got the like, guy, doesn't want to share, right? If you got the guy, if you got the guy from Bridgerton's, you know, bear tested <laughs> on your vision board. We all do. It's fine. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I have to tell you, the Duke is in my brain. Okay, as I'm writing my new novel. I'm picturing him as I'm writing one of the characters. Oh gosh, I mean, the Duke. we all are. The Duke. 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 Duke is the real hero of 2021. Oh, like, let's just go ahead and put God. it out there. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us anything about what you're working on now or is it tip top secret? Yeah, no, I, you know, it's funny because I always would just blurt everything out and then I yeah. have all these author friends who are like, I can't tell you anything. So now I'm like, Okay, maybe I shouldn't tell so much, but yeah. I will say I will say that I am still bitten by the historical fiction bug. Awesome. And nice. so I'm writing a story that takes place between the 1940s and the 1950s. Ooh. I needed a little break from the 1800s. That was a yeah, lot of energy. <laughs> that was a lot <laughs> to time. be there for three years, you know, and yeah. so I Damn. need something out. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's yeah. 1940s, 1950s. It's a cross between Philly and and well, I'm, I grew up in Philadelphia. So it's a cross between a character in Philly and DC. Same, you know, mm -hmm. themes that I love, which I love and mm -hmm. women, strong women who have things to overcome. Yeah. Really big, something really big in the center of the story. That I won't mm -hmm. tell you, but um, yeah. it, I'm on the second draft. I'm kind of working my way through yeah. it. Awesome. And uh, we'll see second where it goes. Yeah. Bravo. Now, are we, you, maybe you can't say this either, but are we talking about, are these, you don't have to tell us who or anything, but are these real people or are they um, fictional people in sort of a real setting? So the, they are fictional, but I will tell you the character, um, the Philadelphia character, I've been mm -hmm. thinking a lot about my grandmother. Um, oh. My grandmother has passed away, but she had my mother at 15 and oh. she had her out of wedlock in the 50s. And Thank what you. a scandal, what a scandal. Yeah. And yeah. I was, and so I think I'm thinking about her. I'm thinking about that time period. I'm thinking about what that was like for her. And mm. if circumstances would have been different, how would things have turned out? So that yeah. was kind of the beginning of this idea for me mm. in writing the, not the fifth novel. Mm. Wow. I love that. That yeah. sounds great. Well, I can't wait to read it. And how mm -hmm. amazing to kind of do that deep dive into your own family history. I, I think yeah. that's extraordinary. What a, mm -hmm. I don't know, just kind of a, a way to connect all the dots and connect mm -hmm. your present with their past. That, that's mm -hmm. incredible. Particularly when people have passed away, it's almost like yeah. they want their story to be told too. So I feel that I feel the energy of both of my grandmothers, yeah. my maternal and my paternal, and mm -hmm. even my great grandmothers, I feel them kind of whispering and giving me little tidbits mm -hmm. of the story. 
I do need to talk to some people who are actually still living though, because I'm trying to get the details right about what it yeah. was like moving through the fifties, you know, yeah. in the city at that time. So, um, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's been fun. It really has been. That's awesome. Actually, Sadiq, well, one, of, one of my best friends grew up in the fifties in Philadelphia. So if you want Ooh. to connect after this, I'm happy to put you into okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I grew up in the sixties in Philadelphia, sixties ah. and seventies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't remember much of it. But- <laughs> <laughs> so Sadiqa, I think a lot of our writer viewers would be so interested to know that you actually began your extremely successful career by self-publishing, which is awesome. I mean, talk about making things happen for yourself. That's amazing. So uh, obviously your incredible hard work and dedication paid off, making Love in a Carry-On a huge success. Mm-hmm. Big enough to land your first two book deal at St. Martin's, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know so much about me. That's Kristen. awesome. <laughs> I, I, I get, I get to tip my hand to Christy on that. Christy, Christy filled us in on your background. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey for you? I think that's so extraordinary. Well, I started off, so, so I was a theater major in college and realized halfway through college, I better switch my major to communications or I'm not going to be able to get a job. So luckily, I graduated with a degree in communications. And so my first job was in publishing. And so it was there that I was kind of learning the ins and the outs of the business. I worked on the first three Harry Potter books. Um, at Scholastic Books. And then I went over to Putnam and I worked with Amy Tan and Bishop T.D. Jakes. And so I was behind the curtain, so to speak, in publishing and I was learning the ins and the outs. So when I decided to quit my job because I was having my first child and I thought, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom, I'm going to be a New York Times bestseller, and I'm going to look good doing it, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Exercise, I've got to (laughs) Yeah, but it didn't work out that way all the way. I I think I was still looking good while I was doing it, but (laughs) I was not published. (laughs) So I had an agent who took my book to market and was not able to get me a deal. And I had already at that point been carrying this book around for about 10 years. So my husband says to me, what do we need to do to get this book? off the ground and we sat we made a list I hired an editor and then I pretended to be the salesperson I was like calling up bookstores with a fake name saying you know oh, I, have oh my gosh. I have really? this great book by Sadiqa Johnson you need to have it in your store you know and so I was the salesperson I was going to every outdoor book festival up and down the east coast and I remember wow. being at the Harlem Book Festival, sweating my makeup off in like 90 degree weather, <laughs> selling copies of Love in a Carry On Bag. So oh it has God. definitely wow. been a journey. <laughs> wow. Without paying your dues, honestly. Talk about it. Yeah. yeah. And really having an appreciation of where you've gotten to. That's that's awesome. Do you, yeah. Quickly, do you have any advice for our, our viewers watching about self-publishing? I would say do it to the best of your ability. My protocol when I was, uh, when I was publishing love in a carry on bag was I didn't want you to know the difference between love in a carry on bag and a book by Simon and Schuster. So it's so funny that now yellow wife is with Simon and Schuster, because that was always my benchmark when I was self publishing was like, I didn't want you to know the difference. So the quality, the quality needs to be there. You need to Mm -hmm. hire an editor. Don't have your grandmother or your best friend edit your book, yeah. hire hire an editor mm-hmm. and save up some money because if you want to do it at a high quality, um, it's not cheap. Yeah, mm. good point. That's great advice. That's, that's really, really great advice. Okay, so we have some little fun questions that we wanted to ask you um, really quickly. How did you celebrate after finding out that you got your first book deal? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. I probably went and had a couple of glasses of wine. I mean, I was in, I was in New York City, so I probably was hanging out at a cute cafe, eating well and drinking well. Back in the day, when we do that. I know. Oh, I miss, I miss, I miss that so much. I know. Those okay. days will be back again. They're that coming. Is They're true. coming. They're that coming. Is true. They're right. true. So, Dikwa, right. you mentioned that you've always been a reader, but have you always known you wanted to be a writer? I didn't. I didn't always know. No, I didn't always know. It was just something that I did, but I didn't know it was going to be my profession. Ah. Okay. My fire question for you. And I'm going to ask you this because somebody asked me this on Wednesday 
when we did my launch. And I just think it's such a great question. If there was any character in your novels that you could hang out with for the day or have dinner with, who would it be? Wow, goodness gracious. Well, I'm I'm all about the child that I'm with right now. So it would have to be a character from Yellow Wife. Mm. And I would definitely love to get, I would love to get to know Phoebe, Phoebe Dolores mm -hmm. Brown for sure. Mm -hmm. And if I can pick a second character, I thought her mother was amazing. So to hang mm. out with Ruth, the medicine mm -hmm. woman and learn about herbs and roots and all those things that cure people, she would definitely be a close mm -hmm. second. Awesome. I want to Very go cool. to that also. I would definitely want to hang out with both of them. So if you could make, <laughs> if you could invite us, if you could invite us to that, oh, yeah. that'd be we'll great. Yes. Yeah. All right, my yeah. turn. So this is usually twisted the other way around, but what piece of advice would you wish your younger self gave you now, your older self? It's, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I remember being young, thinking that the world is coming to an end. And I would tell yeah. myself, you know, it really is not that bad. Stay in a place of gratitude and all good things will happen. Wow. Oh, yeah. good I think we should embroider Beautiful. that all, all <laughs> of them, you know? You yeah. say it again, that was lovely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Speaking, okay. Of, not, speaking, of, wait, just, speaking of your friend, Oprah, she, um, <laughs> Cause you know, cause I mean, she's in the left of your vision board. Like it's like a step away. She's in her <laughs> magazine. Um, but I love her meditations with Deepak Chopra. And they're like one of my favorite things that she says is if the only prayer you ever said in your life was thank you, that would be enough. I just think that is the most amazing, which is basically what Sadiqa just said. So yeah, yeah. Gratitude. gorgeous. Gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing that I do that that our friend Chrissy, I'll share with you that our Thank friend you. Oprah told me, you're welcome. Okay. You know, I love you, girl. So we'll share <laughs> Oprah. But the other thing she told me or told us, but I'll say she told me was that um, make a list of gratitude every day. She says, put three yeah. things down that you're grateful for every day. I've made it 10 because mm -hmm. I'm thinking if Oprah does three and her life is that ginormously great mm -hmm. and big, I surely mm -hmm. need to do 10 so I can catch up with her. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I love that strategy. That's really good. We should all do that, you guys. We Everybody out there watching, 10 things you're grateful for. <laughs> Ten. Every day. And we'll post Every them. Single day. We'll post them. And especially we'll now, them. like it really does shift your focus on, it does. onto what is going right and off of what isn't yeah. so great. Yeah. Sadiqa, what inspires you? Hmm. What inspires me? You know, I want to be great for my children. I want them to, I want them to be proud of me. I want them to look up to me. I want them to say, that's my mom, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm inspired by them. I just took a group on the Richmond Slave Trail with a hiking group. So we combined book clubs and a hiking group. And I brought my youngest daughter with me. I literally had to drag her, um, but she came. And at the end of it, she said, mom, I feel like everybody treated me a little bit special because I was your daughter. She was like, Aww. you did so well. I'm so oh, proud of you. Aww. And that, that I will feel that for a good two weeks. I will feel her, her, her pride in me for a good time. I feel it. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. It really is. And well, and I mean, just to see, like, I felt proud of you, like to see you with all of those women on that trail and just how like overcome they were. And yeah. like you brought all of those people together to learn about that piece of history. And it was, it was incredible just to see, I wish, you know, I could have been there. I mean, it was yeah. just, it was amazing to see. It really was. Thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you so much for these amazing answers. Um, but stick around for another minute if you wouldn't mind. We are going to do a couple of quick announcements, but then we have one more question for you before we go. But we okay. wanted to remind all of our viewers out there about just a few things. Well, supporting indie booksellers is one way to keep the communities up and running. And that is indie booksellers really supporting them as part of our mission. And this week, Nantucket Book Partners needs your support. And hey, in exchange, you get 10% off Sadiqa's gorgeous novel, The Yellow Wife, or any of our upcoming novels. And don't forget, Patty's Surviving Savannah is out now. And this is the last day to support her during that all-important first week. Mm -hmm. And you'll get 10% off at Nantucket Book Partners plus a free luggage tag for your own future voyages if you order there. 
And once again, we're grateful to our partners and Mama Geraldine's delicious cheese straws and cookies. We all love them. And Page One Books, whose book subscriptions are like a stitch fix for book lovers. You can find those links and discount codes in this post or on our Friends in Fiction Facebook page. All right, Sadiqa, you're up one more time. Okay. Before you go, you've given us life tips, soul tips, meditation tips, <laughs> vision board tips, gratitude tips. <laughs> but what we really want is a writing tip. Can you give us one? Mm, a writing tip. Okay. I wanted all those other tips too. Just yeah, I want them all. Yeah. <laughs> I would say the biggest writing tip I can offer you if you are an aspiring writer is keep your butt in the chair. It is so difficult sometimes to write with so many distractions. My writing teacher would always say 10 minutes before bed. If you write 10 minutes before bed, you make it a practice, you start practicing that muscle. Next thing you know, it's 30 minutes before bed. And then 30 minutes mm -hmm. turns into an hour. And before you know it, you have 50 pages in front of you. So be yeah. intentional about your writing, set boundaries around your writing time, you know, make an appointment with yourself the same way you would a doctor's appointment, you know? Be intentional about your writing. And the more you put to it, the magic will start to come. Hmm. Beautiful. I love that. Awesome. That's so true, isn't it? Oh, we can't manufacture that magic. It's, you know, yeah. we show up every day and every now and then it comes out of us. Yes, every <laughs> now and again. We had, a, we had another author give a, a writing tip, which was, it could kind of go hand in hand with what you just said. And it was the calendar. And you had to X off the calendar. You oh, only yeah. have five minutes a day. Ooh. So that is such a little bit right but usually mm -hmm. you're like you said tonight it, five minutes goes to 10 minutes goes to a half hour it's just mm -hmm. growing but you yeah it off. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I always feel well, that when I'm kind of at the end of my writing like when I'm like okay I'm done and then I don't know if this happens to you guys but then that's when everything starts spilling out like the yes. moment I'm like oh okay, yes. yeah this is this is enough I'm done yes. and then it's like all this you know all this story <laughs> just starts pouring out of me <laughs> when it's like time to pick your kids up from school and you're like i just need five yeah. more minutes yeah. <laughs> so you <laughs> leave yourself rabbit trail notes do yeah. you leave yourself like don't forget this don't forget this don't forget this because it's coming out and you have to go yeah, yeah. Leave like little and fun. today i would when i was running today actually on my way back of course that's the other thing is when i'm running you know you're getting the energy and the story out of your head but you're also cleansing so that new information can come. And yeah. all of a sudden, the, the words just start coming. So I got yeah. my voice memo, and then I just start talking to myself. And that was good oh, enough. Oh, another yeah. tip. Does that work, the voice memo then? So yeah. today was only like the second or third time I did it. So tomorrow when I sit down to write, I'll go back and listen to it, and then I'll transcribe it. But at least I caught the great thought as I was having it. Ah, oh, fascinating. All right. Yeah. Well, Sadiqa, you have been the most wonderful guest. We have loved having you. Yeah, love we having love you. Yellow Wife. Um, everybody yeah. out there who's watching, please do not miss this extraordinary and very important book. Um, we're so proud to have been a part of your love very, that. very long virtual book tour. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank, you. thank, thank you, you, thank you guys so much for having me. And thank you for doing what you're doing. You guys have filled a space that we needed as writers. So oh. thank you. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Fortunate to have you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Keep writing. <laughs> Well, so wow. to all of you out there, I just want to remind you once again, it is our darling Patty's launch week. It is the last day of her launch week. If by some chance you have not yet bought Surviving Savannah. God forbid. <laughs> as Augusta Longfellow would say, Augusta Longfellow would be swooning on the oh. painting couch. Um, <laughs> but we'll be without it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my word. Um, but please do pick it up. It's it's the last day of her all important launch week. And as you might have heard us say, that first week propulsion is very important to um, the fate and the future of a book. And plus, you're going to love it. So that's the most important thing. We will see you uh, this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. with Jennifer Robson and Ariel Laha. And we'll get a special sneak peek of what's next for our patty. So we'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Right, good, good night, night. everybody. <laughs>
Thank you for tuning in. Join us every week on Facebook or YouTube, where our live show airs every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And please, subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Instagram. We're so glad you're here. Good night.